Welcome to the Black Box Stocks Options Flow Crash Course. I am Money Flow Mel, one of the many team traders at Black Box Stocks. I have Charlie joining me today. He is my personal mentor and has over 23 years trading and specializing in options flow. Welcome, Charlie. Thanks, Mel. Thank you. I'm excited to do this. There I'm very are, excited. Yes, yes. There are a lot of people that follow options flow, trade around options flow. And what we've found is there's not very many that know how to actually analyze options flow to be able to find actual trades and really look for that bigger money. So we're going to show you how to do that. I'm going to just jump right in. We've got to start with the order types because this is important in options flow you're going to have orders come in two types you're going to have a block which is a single large trade executed on one exchange block trades are generally negotiated and can also be tied to other types of trades some of your advanced option strategies versus a sweep which are trades that are broken up and executed across multiple exchanges and sweeps can indicate urgency to get into a trade. And really wanna show what that looks like visibly so that you're kind of seeing how these orders come through. I've got an example here in SE. This is one big block, 1.54 million behind it in premium. And you can see that filled with one order. Somebody said, I want this, but I want this at this price. That's all I'm willing to pay. It was pre-negotiated and came in as a solo block. This is going to be versus what a sweep order looks like. I'll let you do this one, Charlie. KBH. The so KBH, $1 million sweeper coming across the tape, 3,184 contracts. This is what it looks like going across that exchange. And this happens in milliseconds. And you can see that 3,184 across CBOE, EdgeX, ARCA, just everything. Just boom, 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 boom. Just sweep it. Get me in as fast as you can. Don't care what I pay for it. Just give me in a sweep is a market order shows that urgency definitely shows that urgency big difference when you see that and actually can visually understand what that looks like <clears throat> now that we know what the order types are and let's jump into actually analyzing the flow so we know that there's a lot of people that look at flow not everything's going to be unusual or just because you have options flow doesn't mean it's actionable really want to show you some uh, tips and tricks that we use um, to actually set ourselves up to analyze the options flow. This is going to be looking at the same strike and expiration. We're looking for sweeps because we want to see that urgency or sweeps and blocks. Um, not really looking at just solo blocks because remember, those are pre-negotiated. Uh, you can have stock replacement, other things going on or attached with that order. So really want to keep that with sweeps or sweeps and blocks going to be focusing on also seeing that contract price increase. This is a big one for us, Charlie. This is something we really, really uh, pay attention to, as well as that IV increasing. And a pro tip, check those timestamps. Multiple orders can come in and in such a short time frame that usually indicates that it's the same buyer. Rarely are you going to have somebody coming in and then somebody else at the same time, you know, in another house looking at the same thing you're looking at. So let's go through some examples and really put some of this into context. Some of them are just this easy. Let's take a look at this hog here. We get it very clean coming in on the ask. We're going to always start at the bottom and focus here on the details. So they came in paying 240. They still want it in. They paid 275 and they still want it in paying 285. So you see how they're sweeping that. And every time they're coming in, contract price is increasing. You also have IV increasing going up to 43, 45, 47. This is a shorter duration. It looks like we may have the same trader here, but more importantly, they swept this. They wanted it in at 240 and they still want it in willing to pay up for those contracts. So it's just very clean, all on the ask, contract price increasing, IV increasing. Charlie, you want to do X? X. So this this trade right here happened in literally 15 seconds. You can see the $1,200 contract market order. Uh, we know that it's a sweep. IB66 came through again, another 1,200 contracts, this time paying almost 96 cents. IB jumps two points. They want another 1,200. So what do they do? 99 cents. They're still paying up. IB increased to 69. So this trader put in, you know, 300 and 
almost 40 grand into this trade. Uh, now, we're not saying these trades are going to work or anything. We're just showing you what we're looking for and any examples of clean flow. Yep. Personally, oh, I'd like right. to see both those in the millions, but you, you don't always get what you, you want. But that's <laughs> uh, good examples of just good, easy to, to read clean flow. And here's another example of Oxy, just a few more line items. Just kind of wanted to show you what that looks like. Um, not really the notional that we'd want to see, but let's kind of, again, we're going to train ourselves, same strike, same expiration, contract price going up, IV going up. Um, they started coming into this at 25 cents above the ask and still want it in. These are all sweep orders coming in. They're saying, get me in, get me in now. And as they continue to fill this I sorry, this contract pricing is going up. So starting at 25 cents, continue to really just increase, even coming all the way up here, paying um, 89 cents. And here you have that IV increasing. Um, we mentioned that there was just a little bit of a lull here where you kind of drop from 85 uh, down to 83, but we wanted to make sure you were looking um, at the timestamp as well, you kind of lost some of that momentum, didn't really keep it just a few minutes apart. So still very active, but every time they came in, paid up for that contract. Uh, so this is just an example of what that really looks like when they're like sweeping and continuing to pay up. Fits that criteria. Sometimes flow looks this clean and looks this easy, but oftentimes you really do have to analyze the flow. So we want to go through looking at some mixed options flow and what that looks like when it comes across on the tape. So I'm going to continue to repeat this because we're always looking at the same thing. Same strike and expiration, sweeps or sweeps and blocks, that contract price increasing, IV increasing, and we're going to check timestamps just to kind of see how uh, that comes in to see if it's the same buyer. And this was a big one. This is the one that you're looking for, this big money EXPE. You want to go ahead and take that one, Charlie? Yep. Yeah, so you can see at the bottom here at 9.33 and 15 seconds. Uh, this came through $2.29 million. No bidder ask. So at that at that point, it's not really actionable for us. Uh, didn't know the intent. The second one, though, uh, you can see it's at $92 on the ask sweepers, $1.71 million. Uh, again, boom, $2.31 million. Price increased again. IV is still jumping. Then you got this below the bid, <clears throat> 40 seconds later, and, and they're like, oh my God, they're flipping that out. Listen, that trader didn't buy 250 contracts for $2.3 million to sell it and make 125 bucks, because if they flipped that out, that would have been the profit, $125. It didn't happen. So again, IV jumped, price jumped again. So we knew that's not flipping, that's not the trader selling for $125. So that timestamp over here tells us everything. And a few seconds later, 16 seconds later, again, $1.6 million uh, paying $92.75. So they didn't buy it. Oh my God, I don't want it. I want to sell it. You know what? No, I do want it. Buy it back uh, 16 seconds later. That's not, not how options flow trading works. Not for a while. And again, finishing off at 93. Uh, and that was a few minutes later, a little drop in IV from that 47, but still higher than where they started. Uh, again, that five minute lull can often drop that uh, but that's just good clean flow it's good clean flow to me and mel we want it to be good clean flow to you uh, that bb again will confuse a lot of people and it and it does it does because um they're not no they don't know to analyze and, and that's so important um when you're looking at these and this is this is millions of dollars here this is the the big player um you you want to really be focusing again that that details is going to tell you ultimately what's happening that order those orders are coming in quick um, you start to have those spreads widen out so some of those can fall and reflect as a bid side but we're looking at all of the information collectively and actually analyzing the options flow this was definitely um, some big money being put to work yeah that that between 954.10 and 955.06 that's 56 seconds, 56 seconds that those three came through. Again, they didn't buy it, sell it, buy it back. Or I didn't decide to buy it, Mel decided to write it, and then Mario decided to buy it. That didn't work. That was all the same buyer. All the same buyer there. Great example. <clears throat> this Twitter, this was, uh, this was a good one. This is what we wait for. Um, they started coming in. Uh, at 2.20 a.m. Central Time, a dollar and 10 cents on the ask. 
price increased a little bit and then they just started jamming this i mean they really started to aggressively come after this contract same strike same expiration and every time they come in that contract price is increasing actually I had so much flow on this one we had to kind of break it up into two screenshots and while this is easy to read all this the ask um, when we get over here and we start to see some of this bid side we just kind of wanted to again we're looking at the contract pricing increasing and this whole time where we originally had iv starting at 57 and it continues to increase we're still seeing that continuation of the iv going up as well as that contract pricing um, so we've got this mixture of sweeps and blocks and charlie you pushed this for members to the phone app correct I did push this to the phone app and I pushed it three times on Twitter. I remember that day and I'm like, hey guys, this is a great example of just good, solid, clean flow. There's no bid side, you know, early on. It was just just boom, 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 contract price moving up, IV moving up. Then they kept hitting it. So I hit it on Twitter again. I said, hey, the buyer's still adding. Then after that big block at the top there that you see uh, above the ask, the I put it on there again. I said, wow, so this is the third time I'm going to mention Twitter today. And I did push that to the phone app. You have BBS, shameless plug here. We have a phone app. We're going to send the best of the best flow straight to your phone and say, hey, boom, check this out. And so, yeah, I think this was on a Friday. Matter of fact, I know it was on a Friday. And then that Monday, there was, you know, news that Elon had bought 9.1 or 9.3% stake in Twitter. And I think these were 800 or 1,000% that week. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, that was a that was a good Monday for everybody to wake up to. So, but the, just a good example. Even though there's some bid sides in there, this is still you know if you're looking at the time stamps and IV, nobody's selling it, nobody's flipping it. They're just jamming it. And yeah. That's just how it feels. Yeah, and that sweeper, that aggression, get me in, and I still want in, and I still want in. And this is really one of those trades that we really sit and wait patiently for because when they come in, they come in fast this nike flow actually today is 414 when we're recording and this is some activity that came in this morning and this was um definitely a, a great trade we've got several in the room still actively in it some already taken profit but let's just take a look at what we we're looking at because this kind of tripped a few people up charlie first order came in bid came in bid side and but it was 130 grand so it's it's not going to get a lot of radars except that they've been buying nike all week um <clears throat> I know you had got in Nike earlier this week as well, and there's some good flow. And I think it was the uh, 130s or something earlier in this week. It's uh, Wednesday, I don't know, Tuesday they were buying it. And then I think they added to it yesterday. But you right here, it, then you get that big sweeper at 836 and 32 seconds, 930 30 grand. Now, what happens? The room starts tripping a little bit. Not everybody, most everybody, and even on Twitter when I posted this, most everybody's like, this is good, clean buying. But some, some, sites might have this as a bull and then a picture of a bear and then a picture of a bear and then a picture of a bull and you know it's opening it's closing no it's not listen look at these timestamps. this is why we preach time stamps we're probably the first people to ever actually do so so it came in at 755 769 779 again the trader didn't flip to make a few dollars there again bid side but again 794 look at this ib has jumped from 26 to 27 now you got another ask side sweeper a little bit, minute and a half later, uh, but the price dropped 80 cents. So the spot price dropped, contract price dropped as well. But you can see right there again, though, they started the next flurry, that 838.35, all the way up to uh, 840.45, and they jammed these contracts again. It's a high of day when that block came through for $2.38 million. This flow, while confusing some people, we look at this and instantly know, again, this trader didn't flip or I didn't decide to buy and then somebody else decided to write, which we'll get into in a few more slides. This was just good, clean buying to us. Confusing for some people that are new to options trading. Uh, look at that chart. I mean, these these were up 35% in just you know a little while. So this whale who had millions of dollars in this, looking at this as one, two four five million dollars maybe more it was already up 35 percent by lunch I already made a million and a half bucks by lunch off this trade and the opportunities here you know whether you're a swing trader and, and you you want the time on these contracts to actually ride this day trader you've got so many opportunities um and when you start to see this kind of size being put to work especially in these choppy markets like this is what you're the the moves that these 
these underlying the, that these charts make are just amazing. And also, I'm Central Time, so this is right at the open, six minutes. So you see such uh, aggression and sweeper activity to get in, and right away. When that bell opened, what name did they want? They wanted Nike. Um, so they came right. in and came in with size. And sometimes you don't always get that clarity, but when you do, you that when they really start aggressively coming in and that's what they're coming in for, you get these really nice moves come through and, and it's been a great trade. And um, I know I was able to profit off that, have some of the swing trades still open. So I think we've got some opportunity here. Retail's been strong, so really nice looking trade today it's not always that easy. And so where we've gone through some opportunities, a very clean all ask side, how to actually dig a little bit deeper and analyze some of that that is mixed. This one seems to be what really blows everyone's mind. There's not a lot of people that are talking about bullish puts. Mel, what's a bullish put? I bought a put in Tesla yesterday and and I'm, I'm green in it. Ain't no such thing as a bullish put. And this is just, this is the one that it really does show you is like that. Bullish puts, guys, we are able to see when they write. That's the whole other side of being able to uh, utilize the options market. Not only are you able to go into positions um, to be able to capture directional moves, uh, there is a lot of writing and they're collecting premium. That's another way to be able to take in some money. And we see that often. You don't hear about it often because some don't have all the flow to be able to see all of the activity that's coming in. So a little bit of what we're looking for, it's going to be a little bit different from what we've talked be about before. Um, we're looking yellow puts at the bid and our yellow color sig uh, signifies that the open interest has been exceeded with that one single line item. So it's going to be an order that exceeds the open interest at the bid um it's sell to open order the investor rights puts to collect the premium that contract price is now going to be decreasing and that iv is going to be decreasing we've got some great examples so we're going to just jump right in um this apple was was a really this was really telling um i'll, I'll let you take this one charlie and i'll take the next one yeah so this you know market had been just selling off selling off selling off let me get my yawn out of the way. Sorry, guys. Uh, when all of a sudden one day they write these in the money, you know, puts on Apple, and we're like, whoa, that's 19 million dollars ish, <clears throat> roughly. So we're like, okay, is this a turn? Because a lot of times you'll see in the turns, instead of them just starting to buy calls, they'll actually start writing. And uh, this was a great example here, and you can see. Now we did go down two more days after this and actually they continued to write. It was different strikes and stuff, <clears throat> but we've seen the same aggression and put writing in Apple. And uh, again, they do this to collect that premium. So some people are gonna wake up you know, the next day and just say, wow, there's 10,000 contracts in OI now in these puts and get excited when actually this was a bullish put, they wrote these. You bring up a really good point, and that's something that that most um, may not have ever even heard of. When you have uh, the VIX really high and IV is really high, you do not have a lot of your bigger firms going out of the money calls. The IV is just too increased. So a way that they can still position themselves um, is collecting that premium when you have that IV really increased. And we see that, and we definitely saw a lot more um, of that, this last turning point um, definitely came in, and brought in some great opportunities if you're looking at that. But again, we're able to see the bid side activity as well as anything that comes on the ask or between the spread because we have all of the data and we're pr providing all of that for you so that you can see everything that's coming through. So this Apple was um, a great little signal, especially with the money that was being, uh, the repeat money that was being put into some bullish put activity. We also had a shorter dated um, position in Goob. Just kind of wanted to bring this one up. This was really, uh, it was a weekly. They were writing with some decent size into some weeklies. This was on a Tuesday when they came in, um, shorter dated. You still had a lot of uncertainty in the market. We've had a lot of headline risk, um, interest rate, just so much going on. But they did come in and actually write these for an expiration that was that same week on the 25th. And this one may have tripped up a few people. They first came in below the bid. Um, so we're always starting with 
the first line item before moving up. And then you see that this came in on the ask. But again, what we're seeing here is that contract price is decreasing. Again, we're going over here to this timestamp, very close timestamp. I'm going to assume that's the same buyer. And then that IV is same also writer. decreasing. Sorry, same rider, same rider, and that IV is decreasing. Um, so this was actually a very profitable trade because um, we just, I think we had gapped up that day and did kind of have a run. So these did expire worthless. worthless. These are not what you want to be writing. They're trying to collect that premium. Another way to be able to utilize the options market. Really want to make sure everybody does understand that because um, there's a lot of you could really, if, if you're not really understanding that and looking at all the information, those are not contracts that you want to be buying when they're writing. And just like there are bullish puts, there's bearish calls. Mel, I bought calls in Tesla. There's no such thing as a bearish call. There are, there are. And it's again, just one of those things that you go, what? But when you get comfortable with it, you get familiar with what to look for and you actually know how to analyze it, um, it's something that you'll start to pick up yourself and there are plenty of opportunities to be found for writing as well. So we're looking for yellow calls at the bid. That order exceeds OI at the bid. Sell to open order, the investor writes calls to collect that premium. Now we're looking for contract price decreasing, IV decreasing. And this was an example. I know I, I'm really glad you mentioned this when you called it out on voice to and brought everybody's attention because this got a few people, unfortunately. And this is, I think, one of the main reasons we wanted to put this crash course together was the importance. Um, it really hurts us to see uh, people, their hard earned money when, when they don't or not able to have access to all the activity going on the opposite side of the trade when they there's just a misunderstanding. So Charlie, I'm going to let you go with this one because I know you were really trying to let everybody know um, that this was actually bearish activity. This was bearish activity and I had went and put this on Twitter and, and back to what Mel was saying a second ago too. My pinned tweet talks about high OI is not a reason to buy. You don't, just because you open up your E-Trade or something one day and you see a bunch of OI there, doesn't on puts or calls doesn't mean that's the direction you need to go. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see people make. Uh, my pin tweet on Twitter, but so this right here, we like to what to track the Apple buyers or writers or whatever. So just like we were tracking them when they wrote the puts, one day we wake up and they're writing calls. So they went from bullish to bearish. This was on four or five. Uh, I had went and made a tweet about it and said, hey, I'm not trying to alarm everybody and I'm not making a prediction, but there's a lot of bearish call writing in Apple right now. So there was one big sweeper in there out of all of this that was on the ask for $2.5 million. Now, depending on what service you have, that came through and you didn't see any of this other stuff. You just got that one notification, I'm not going to name names. You know who you are. Uh, that's the only notification they had on Apple. So if you've seen that, you might go, damn, man. Hey, Charlie. They just bought two and a half million dollars in Apple. Brother, I'm I'm going with them. Oh, well, yeah. And if you had all the information, they're going to blow out their quarter. That catches ER. So, but if you had all the information before that, what we were seeing was all this below the bid stuff. There was a little ask down there earlier in the day at 927, but an hour and a half later, almost two hours later, actually, all of a sudden below the bid. And we're like, okay, interesting. Then they hit it again. Then they hit it again. Then this ass side come in there, the market moves around fast. I mean, this all happens pretty quick. And that ass side did come in like three minutes later. But right after that, you see eight seconds. What happens? The price did go up. There's no bid ass there, but all of a sudden, bid, 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 bid again. So we were right. And, and I, we thought so the whole time um, because it was, you know, sometimes it's just going to feel funny. I can't can't help that. I don't run the exchanges and the contract. If you've seen back in the earlier part of this video where we had the example of that uh, KBH and the 3,184 contracts, that's just sometimes it's just the luck of the draw how that can land. But we knew this was right off the bat, below the bid, below the bid, below the bid, ask, bid, 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 bid. And you can see same chart over here like we showed you. Look at what happened after that day. That day right there was almost peak apple not quite a little under but almost peak apple and from there it dropped 12 bucks so they're collecting the crap out of this premium right now which is way in the millions here's probably five million dollars in premium here mm -hmm. uh, 
and they're just they're collecting it and so yeah the chart tells the story this one was this was this was one really that got us just because we were trying to <laughs> that just not having all the information and seeing um, something that has that kind of size and without being able to actually analyze all of it have all the data um, you, you could have been on the very wrong side of that that trade yeah. um, so very important and, and when we see that a lot the first thing we're gonna do is go tell the room hey guys look this is bearish 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 can't help that one side but we're, we're yelling and screaming I got on Twitter and yelled and screamed at hey guys there's some you might be seeing some Apple calls here and there at various places Trust me, it's not what you think. Uh, actually, got a few DMs thanking me on this one uh, because we had some people that actually joined them or just went short Apple, either one. And uh, but yeah, we analyzed it right. But this is where analyzing options flow and not just taking one or two line items, but actually looking at IV, looking at timestamps, looking at the whole picture. You know, tells you more of the story. Absolutely, absolutely. We had another example, and this is one I was kind of walking through with some members just because this was um, CVX. This was back on 323. So again, um, you had everybody that was just automatically assuming just long all the oil because just crude was rocking and rolling. You had headline risk. You had a lot of uncertainty, and they pretty much took advantage, you know, right here on this move up. And with all of that that goes with it, and again, they were writing these calls and really want to kind of make sure everybody sees how far out of the money these are so you've got um current spot at 165.82 and they're riding the 182.50s and if you didn't have all of the flow you didn't see that this first came first bid side but more importantly that every time they came into this this contract price decreased these were not calls that you wanted to be buying they were writing these to collect premium and today is actually 414 when these expire and we are nowhere close to that 182.50 so if you followed this thinking there was going to be this massive upside move um, come shorter dated for cvx uh, you were on the wrong side of that trade and so they're smart these people writing this wrote those out of the money calls and it probably sucked a lot of people right in mm -hmm. it did it, it, a lot of people it, write it, in. It did. You know. And, and just one thing that I was I was telling everybody that was on voice, we said, okay, even if you didn't have all the information, if you only had this isolated just to show ask and above the ask, something was wrong. That contract price with that much in, coming through decreased. It went from 85 to 84 yeah. to 78. And our members know that's it has to be going up. That's part of our playbook, part of our checklist. Yep. Contract price going up is so important. If it's not, something's off, something's wrong, ignore it. There's too much flow to come in to try to make something yeah. fit that just isn't, you can't stick, you know, the puzzle has to go together. Um, but right. this was really good example you know um of being able to have access to all the information and how important that really is if you're yeah. using options flow to make trade and even if you didn't have the information like she said if you take our earlier checklist of the price going up this didn't check any boxes forget that there's any bid sides in here for a minute this and just mm -hmm. just pull up the ass sides again not one iv increase and not one increase in the contract everything was down 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 so that's a red flag for us it's one of the things that we've been teaching for years is look if it ain't going up something's usually off wrong. something's wrong and when you have access to all of the options flow you get to also see when they're closing positions this is important this is often overlooked um, if you follow them in, you need to know when they exit. So you want to be able to still see that. Remember, these are some larger positions. So if you see them come in and you've got a couple hundred thousand millions, you're going to see them exit. And most people don't realize that for some reason. But when you have access to all the data, you're able to see what that looks like. And what we're looking for is that contract price decreasing, right? Because there's no longer that interest to stay in they're exiting that and that iv decreasing so the same thing there's no longer that interest for that iv to say increase that's going to continue to go down and so here's an example of one that was opened and closed on the same day i'll let you take this one charlie i know you traded yeah, this one. It's a good one this one was fun they came in that morning uh ask side and we're like man they're nailing these puts and and low and pretty aggressive because it was expiring that day 
and they dropped 300 plus grand in it right there just boom boom uh you you can see the iv jump there now uh, and and the contract jumped there so the contract jumped and the iv jumped in the first two within 25 minutes they're selling on the bid they're getting out they already collected a double right there they already doubled their money in 20 minutes and then 30 minutes later they get out of the rest of their position but you see right there it was 998 in and a thousand and six out um but yeah they opened and closed it all within 47 minutes yep and we you'll got to watch often, play. yeah <laughs> you'll often see that um even within the same day you may see a flurry of activity that fits all of what we're looking for and you get in and then you start to see them closing out of some of those contracts and if you're not paying attention to that you could be holding on to something and not be you know not know that you know they're taking their profit <laughs> you know whether it just be um that it was shorter dated longer dated it is really important so we do want to make sure that everybody is doing their due diligence if you are following them in make sure you're going and checking and seeing um if they're exiting that position just to make sure you're staying on the right side of that trade if they yeah. exit you definitely um want to reassess your position um, if they start closing out we also can see rolling which is interesting so here's an example of where they um this is all the same day where they were closing an existing position and they were rolling down so you can see here we've got really uh time stamp really close together you go over here we're on the bid 184 185 then we drop to 180 so this contract price is decreasing and you also have that iv coming out 90 88 89 86 but on this day they came right in you can see the time stamp right after that and started coming back in but they just were choosing a lower strike the 24 puts and this fits the criteria for actionable flow all going in the right direction so just kind of wanted to give an example of some closing and some rolling now we're going to jump into momentum and spec flow so ultimately options flow trading you are wanting to know where the larger money is being put to work that's really what you're sitting and being most patient for um, now around that you can certainly use options flow to find some opportunities uh, where some momentum could come in or some speculative flow that's going to be your shorter stuff that's going to be your day trade scalps there's always going to be some kind of opportunity coming through but stick to the playbook so we will still be looking at same strike and expiration sweeps or sweeps and blocks no solo blocks contract price increasing iv increasing and check those timestamps. so there are opportunities that come about and we did already talk about oxy but i wanted to talk about this one from a momentum um, standpoint these are very short dated they came in on a wednesday that's going to be a weekly expiration there was an opportunity here for a scalp. Maria got in this one, I got in this one when she did, and you had these contracts move pretty quickly in a shorter period of time. These went from 25 cents um, up to 69 cents. So you had an opportunity to grab a few contracts, um, scalp that, uh, you know, while there was this flurry and this momentum coming in. But I will tell you, and especially with these contracts just as fast as they went up once that music stops and there's no longer that momentum and that constant feed um, those contracts did actually depreciate pretty quickly so you want to be selective you want to follow the playbook and you want to make sure that you're taking your profits not holding on this is not something we're trying to marry shorter dated it's momentum flow speculative flow charlie i know this is not what you're looking for you know at all but there are certainly opportunities um, do you want to talk about the momentum um, and spec, yeah. very spec flow we had in UUU? Yep, yeah. and, and this one only went up to like 35 or 40 cents, but uh, you know, it was a double, but uh, the uh, again, this is Tinder, not eHarmony. We're not getting married. This is just a quick date. We're going on a date. And and these right here, you can see, these were way out of the money. So they were, you know, buying these, expecting them to double. More than likely, they just flipped them out probably the same day but this is one of those things that is going to catch your eyes you're like why would they do that why would they buy that you know and decent size there for somebody buying that much spec flow but again you just don't want to marry it you know this isn't like a nike example this is like more of a quick hitter hey i'm up 30 40 50 percent out uh you might catch your doubles but yeah this was um something that far out of the money uh 
they're going to have to drop some serious millions for me to like marry it and swing it and sleep with it at night. But this is, uh, you know, just an example of spec flow. So you are here is talking about spec flow and this is a, this is spec flow. And so we really did want to show, you know, several ways to be able to use um, options flow, you know, whether you're swing trading um, opportunities for very long swings with leaps, um, shorter dated scalps, day trades, there's a little something for everyone. So we wanted to kind of highlight and hit on some of that. But more importantly, we really did just want to make something to really bring awareness to how to find actionable uh, trades using the options flow. Not everything that you see is unusual just because it's hitting the scanner. There are, there's so much that comes through. You have to be selective. In order to successfully trade around options flow, you must be selective and you must look for those, that criteria. Um, and, and we'll repeat it over and over again because it's something that is so important. Um, same strike, same expiration, contract price going up. This is how you really start to get a better understanding of money flow and how to find actionable trades. Um, so really appreciate you being on, uh, Charlie. I, I look forward to doing a lot of these again, and I think um, this will be a really big benefit for those that maybe just don't know. You know, they don't necessarily have access to all the information. Um, haven't really had anybody talk about options flow with them. They don't really know what to look for. So I'm excited to be able to share this with everybody as I know you are. I do just want to side note, um, if you are new to options flow or you're interested in black box stocks, there is a 20% off discount link below for you to join. If you're interested, this is stuff that we talk about on voice all day as everything is coming in. I think that's important um, that as the information is coming in, you have a talk through and somebody helping to analyze and review that. So you know what is more actionable opposed to some of the stuff that we would like to avoid. Absolutely. Well, Mel, thank you very much. I look forward to doing the next one. This has been great. Thank you so much, Charlie. Y'all have a good day. You too.